Thank you for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed for our Black History Month Living Legend Moment with our guest, Mr. Lawrence A. Wood, among his many accomplishments as a retired Navy captain, eye surgeon, physical therapist, screen playwright. He is also the author of a crime novel series, one of which Among Pigeons is set to pilot on the big screen. Thank you so much for joining us, and let's jump right into this conversation. Mr. Wood, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I really enjoy um, having, I'm really enjoying the opportunity of speaking with you because uh, I, you know, just before we, we started talking, I, you know, I, I paced up here and uh, said to the Lord, just let me say your words. Let me, give me the words. So I'm ready. I'm ready for him to give me the words and give and hand them off to you. <laughs> that means that means I'm going to be responsible for the word. <laughs> I'm accountable now. Okay, I will take that. I am so excited and so happy to have you with us today. Um, and so I think what's going to be really important for our viewers is just to to learn more about you, your amazing journey, your amazing journey. When we talked previously, you told me that you started off in Harlem. Yeah, but uh, the two words I could use, the Navy. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, I mean, but of course it's not that simple, but you know, uh, growing up in Harlem and in Washington Heights, which sit uh, next to each other. Uh, wow. The best advice my father ever gave me, he said, uh, I could be any, I could be anything I wanted to be. Yeah. And uh, I was stupid enough to believe him. <laughs> so, so when I set my mind out to do something, mm -hmm. it seemed that it, it came true. You know, I, I initially wanted to be a, a uh, I thought I was going to be a biologist. Mm -hmm because science interested me so much. And from, from there, uh, I, I, I decided to be a physical therapist because I wanted money. I didn't want to, <laughs> you know. And then from there, somebody, uh, a doctor asked, you know, said whatever she saw in me, said, uh, I think you can be a doctor. Wow. I, I had never thought that in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Never occurred to me. Wow. My parents never said it. My teachers never said, you're so smart, you could be a doctor. Wow. You know, my friends never said it. Mm -hmm. It never occurred to me. She was the only person that said that. And eventually, I took her up on it. And then I went to medical school at Meharry. Oh, nice. In Nashville. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, joined the Navy and became an eye surgeon. You know, so, and... And eventually ended up, and me and my wife settled here in uh, California, I mean, in Southern California, in San Marcos. But the, the journey, that journey that I just described to you, I went from Harlem to La Jolla, wow. and I couldn't have planned that. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. I could have done without God to get me there, and nothing. It's it's just it's stunning to me how that how when I look back how that happened. Mm -hmm. And it, you know Proverbs sixteen nine, uh, my favorite verse. Uh, in his um, in his heart a man plans his way, but God directs his steps. Yeah. Wow. So I I may have had to plan. But God said, this is how you get to it. Yeah. And, and he's giving you somewhat the desires of your heart. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, in, in, in some way, even in that path, you know, he knew these are things that he, it's funny how he placed those things in you to even have those desires. Yeah. Or bring yeah. someone along who plants that seed. Absolutely. And start walking that path out. So. Right. Right. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. So I guess with, with the journey, then um, you're a retired captain. Um, yeah. uh, you're no longer practicing at this point. No, I'm not practicing. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been several years now. Okay. Okay. 
one of the things that you are doing uh, so awesome, but even before we get to talking about your writings, I, I wanted to talk about how you, um, what was in your heart and mind, you and your wife, when you started the nonprofit band of the better. It, well, it all, really, it came, it came from the book. Mm -hmm. The, the first book among pigeons. Okay. And and I don't know whether I should go back and tell you the 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 uh, uh, this for the book, and then that led fan on the feather. But uh, uh, yeah, I think I should. That that'll give okay, you the full okay. story. <laughs> I think I should. Okay. <laughs> so. When I was growing up in New York, mm -hmm. there was this bum that came through. He came through every spring into our neighborhood, wow. showed up by, by fall or winter, he was gone. Mm. He, you know, like a, like a robin. Mm -hmm. he, was, he, was the, he was the announcement of spring for us. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but we treated that man so badly. I mean, badly, 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 badly. Wow. And he, he, and he never said one word to us. Mm -hmm. We shout stuff at him, but he would never, you know, I, I, I once or a few times heard him grunt. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know whether he could speak mm -hmm. and chose not to, or whether he could, uh, or, or whether he couldn't speak at all. I don't know. I didn't know anything about the guy, except that, you know, he was nasty, dirty, smelly. Mm. That's what I knew, you know? Wow. So, you know, eventually I left, I left New York and, and never heard, never saw him. In fact, he disappeared before I ever left New York. I don't know what happened to him. He may have died, may have moved on somewhere else. I have no idea. But I started asking after I grew up, every once in a while I would tell that story, right? And I would say to myself, oh, I wonder what happened to him. Yeah. You know? So I started talking to homeless people and, and just to try and get some connection mm -hmm. with this guy that we call John the Bum. Wow. And so from there, then I wrote the book. Now, once I wrote the book, my wife and I got together one weekend and said, said, well, let's get some media training. I'll ask you some questions. And so, and so we did that. And she got to one question that stopped the whole process. Wow. She said, what have you done about homelessness? What have you done, mm. you know, other than write this book? And so from there, that one weekend, we 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 had got the name Fan of the Feather mm -hmm. and uh, opened it up for homeless homeless veterans. Uh, we don't operate it anymore. It was uh, we uh, a few years ago we we uh, we closed it. Okay. But John the Bomb mm -hmm. led to the book, which led to the nonprofit. Wow! And the nonprofit is still active. No, it's not. Okay. It's not active anymore. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah. But it, it inspired you to write. It's amazing how your history impacts your future, um, mm -hmm. and how you you still remember that childhood memory that lingered with you. That said, I've got to bring some attention to this issue, right? Um, because it it is amazing the number of homeless veterans that are still walking the streets, who right. uh, defended our country. Uh, and right. yet they come back um, unable to live in the country that they defended and live well. Um, right. Um, right. So unfortunate. So it's amazing and actually rather heroic that you even had the mindset to put it into a book. Um, uh, and so I, I have enjoyed um, thus far just reading the book um, and seeing how much. Um, and I think one of the questions that kind of came to me as I was reading is how much of that book uh, uh, or the books are uh, a reflection of your personal life? 
<laughs> and, and I say that for a number of reasons, and, and I will I will probably share with you some of the books yeah. that I pulled from some of the books that kind of led me to believe that this isn't just a fiction um, <laughs> story. These are some real events that have occurred in someone's life <laughs> um, that are coming out so beautifully in this book, in the characters that are in the book. So kind of share with me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way, Jackie. <laughs> I'm in all of my stories, but I dare you to find me. <laughs> mm. You say something about God, though, in the book, and you said he is here. <laughs> he's here. Look around. He's here. <laughs> so I, I know you're in there somewhere. I want to go back, though, because I did take the liberty to, to look at the, um, the blog, uh, I Am John's Voice. And there were some things that you wrote there that were very, very compelling. Um, and I just want to read just a, a few of those things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things you said in this particular writing is that once upon a time, you say, I'm glad I wandered by and said hello. In a few moments, God revealed his creation more glorious than any flower, though not as pretty, at least not today. Once upon a time, maybe he was. I won't stop to speak to every homeless person. I don't expect that of you either. But when you do, will you understand their similar their, their similarity with you? I thought that was so profound because in the writings, you make it very clear that they're not much different than no. we are. Not 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 at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, when I was a kid. John the Bum was very different than me because mm -hmm. I, I, as I said, I, I never got got a chance to know him. Didn't want the chance to know him. Mm -hmm. But as I, as I started talking to homeless people, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wow, you think the same things about things as I do. Yeah, you have same similar thoughts as I do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but. The, but for the grace of God, you know, I'm I'm not homeless and thankful for it for sure. But I. No, I was gonna say, but there's so many that are. Yeah, there's so many that are, and and, it, and part of my uh, uh, reason for writing the book and writing the blog and, and all of my writings really is about making people aware of the worth of everybody. Mm -hmm. Every single person. Yes. Everyone. The ones you don't like. Mm -hmm. They're worth something to God. Yes. You know? The, the, and I'm not, when I say you, I'm not speaking of Jackie, but I, but I say the people you hate mm -hmm. are the ones that God loves. Right. And right. we need to be, I'm trying to be aware of that at all times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it was so interesting. Um, you mentioned this, uh, you were talking to students at Palomar College. And you mentioned uh, the fact that, um, this is one of the quotes, this is one of your quotes that I thought was so um, uh, significant. Uh, even, I don't know when you wrote this quote, whether it was before you had this conversation with these students or afterwards, but you said, how can I be judged by the content of my character if you keep reminding me of the color of my skin? But even with that knowledge, you make reference to being called to a greater purpose. Um, and that was what was so profound. There was something else that you shared with those students because you asked them to name some African Americans deserving to be remembered. And mm -hmm. what you found out, and I quote, you said, my list and theirs melded perfectly into a large list of African Americans who chose to serve not just black people, but the world. But you, mm -hmm. then you say they chose to improve the world. They looked beyond their blackness and saw a world that included everyone. Mm -hmm. They acknowledged a need in everyone. And the, the reverse, I think about poverty 
uh, which has no name, just like those who are homeless. The playing field is the same. In love and death, Roman, Barnes, <laughs> my favorite character, <laughs> he, he speaks loudly to this, but this is what he says. He says, mm -hmm. the long recession made us a mirror. And this was so powerful, especially where we are right now. He right. said, we the homeless made it clear to many where they could be spending their next years. Mm -hmm. Fire could make some homeless in an right. instant. A tornado could carry a home into heaven and leave behind its residents in hell. And I thought about the pandemic mm -hmm. and how so many are now in the same position. The playing mm -hmm. field is the same. And, and not just the homeless. If you think about even the industry, um, even the entertainment industry, everybody has right. to use Zoom. Everyone, the right. playing field has become very level. Right. And so it does call us to a greater purpose, I think, to be more giving of everyone. Um, and not just be stuck in this pigeonhole, <laughs> if right. you will, of just seeing just yourself. Yeah, you know when you when you read that stuff back to me that I've written a long time ago, I'm I'm thinking that came out of me. That I really, it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but uh, 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 you know when you talk when you mentioned pigeonhole, that's that's one of my uh, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't like labels. Right. I I, I really don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because you know, once you give somebody a label, then you think you know them. Right. And it and it becomes very easy mm -hmm. to judge them. It's easier, you know, to 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 judge your view of them, your label. Right. Because the label means something to you, you know. But to get to know a person, now that that takes some time, that takes some effort. So we usually take the easy route. Mm -hmm. I'll just label them. Right. That's a bum. You know, that's a whatever. Just whatever label you want to put. And I don't, I don't like like, you know, the the only label that I readily accept is Christian. And I'm beginning to not like that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> you got a point there. <laughs> we need to be just calling ourselves followers of Christ. <laughs> because Man, there you go. Yeah, that, that, that that's label it. is getting real muddy these days. But I'm glad that you made that point because there was something um as as I'm reading love and death among pigeons. There's something about the character Roman Barnes. Mm -hmm. um, and you write so eloquently, uh, and I, I had to take the liberty to write this down or, or to, to make mention of this, because he asks a question. Uh, he says, when will I stop being called an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. He said, I heard speeches from men and women who were sober, sober for more than 20 years, and they introduced themselves as alcoholics. Such a thought was frightening to me. When does the label go away? <laughs> was there a time in life when you can stop calling yourself something you are not? Yeah. And so, you know, I had to go to the Bible because, you know, <laughs> you know, you make it very necessary in this book to go to the Bible. You know, oh, even, oh, as gritty, even as gritty as this book is, it's gritty. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about yeah. that in a minute too. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I, I instantly thought about um Second Peter, which tells us who we are. He said, but we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special um possession that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into mm -hmm. the wonderful light. So why do I still carry that cloak of sinner saved by grace, even, you know. Can I now be saved by grace? Can I now take a hold of what he said that I am and yeah. no longer carry that cloak of I'm a sinner? Because a lot of times we use that as an excuse to justify yeah. our wrong. Right, right. Um, and Roman, in this story, he's saying, you know, 
I don't want it. It was a Roman or Graham. What, what was Roman? Because Roman was the alcoholic. He was the one who um, was mm. there previously homeless. Um, but it was amazing when I heard him. I heard him. This is the other mm. thing about the book. <laughs> find out as you're reading it, you'll hear things. <laughs> I'm reading this book, hearing things, which is so amazing, and mm. how meticulous you are in the writing of this book. But he was really saying, you know, when do I no longer carry this weight? On my yeah. Back. yeah, because, you know, when you have the more labels you take on, mm -hmm. the more burdens you have, wow. the heavier it, it is because you have to live up to this label, that label, that label, that label. And God is trying to tell you <laughs> and me for sure, stop it. Mm -hmm. My my burden is light. He's telling you, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm finding that out more and more the older I get. Mm -hmm. That that is true. I, I don't I don't want to live up to all these these labels. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's it's confusing at times. Yeah, and you know, and other times it's 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 tiring. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. It can't. It can't be. It's a, but what was so beautiful um, uh, that you mentioned in the book uh, with, with Roman? Roman was in the city and he walked past the liquor store. Um, and this, it was just so beautiful. I can only imagine the way you describe how he felt. He said, "I walk taller." Mm -hmm. He said, I walk taller. In other words, this is not my vice anymore. And he, I mean, he, he mentioned the fact that, okay, yeah, he was an alcoholic. You know, you have those days where you want to kind of go throw one up. But he said he walked past there and he walked taller. I think yeah. at that moment, he was saying, I'm not carrying that 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 title anymore. Right. That, that, right. You know, I, I was out here and I know what it's like out here, but I'm going to, you know, I'm now free in some sense uh, that he was right. at that moment. Um, I don't know if he goes back to doing something later right. on in the chapter because in the book, because he does do something that really surprised him. <laughs> he decided he was going to stay out and go find the woman. Um, this book was also very uh -huh. compelling about um, relationships amongst the homeless. Mm -hmm. That was very, very um, profound to me. That there are community within themselves. Um, there is yeah, some, absolutely. There's, there, yeah, there's some uh, social attachment that they have. They, it, it, the book even talks about the freedom that uh, the homeless have compared right. to right. Um, what we call freedom. Right. You want to I mean, they don't. They don't have the. Uh, I mean, it's it's not a place anybody wants us wants to be but when you get in a place where you're not dependent on a lot of things uh then you say to yourself hmm i'm still i'm still living i'm still surviving you, you know and, and you and you notice the things that you don't have to have mm -hmm. you know uh Certainly, I'm not. I'm not advocating people being homeless. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yeah, I, it was something. Um, you talked about the basic necessities, um, and that is what the homeless have access to, whether they go out to seek it out, or organizations are bringing it to them. Right. Um, food, um, blankets. Um, right. Socks, um, yeah. you know, basic necessities they are getting, uh, right. even, even though no, they're not working for them, but they're still their way is still being made. It's like the birds, you know, uh, the birds don't they don't really worry about how they're going to eat. Matthew six twenty five, I think that they, is. They, they don't worry about it. You know, yeah. they know some ungrateful person is going to drop the pizza crust <laughs> on the ground and mm -hmm. they're going to pick it up. And, and I guess, let me ask you this ultimate question, I guess, about the pigeon. Mm -hmm. What made you name it among pigeons? Well, the, the, the pigeon 
especially growing up in New York. I don't know how it is elsewhere, but I think generally elsewhere is not a very likable bird. Mm -hmm. You know, the dirt people think of them as dirty, mm -hmm. as as um, you know, if you throw out some breadcrumbs, then it's they, like they Mm -hmm. Just like just like homeless people, you set up an area to start feeding them. Here they go. Mm -hmm. So in, in in that respect, they're they they're, they're like pigeons, mm -hmm. uh, but also in another respect, they're like pigeons and and birds because they're free. Mm -hmm. You know, at any moment they can be gone, and they just fly and they soar. You know, to be among pigeons is really to be among the homeless. Right. Got it. Something that was very, very interesting um, that Roman says as he's walking, he said, the wind is kind like opportunity. It just keeps on coming. And then then he says, uh, the other character says, I'm waiting for my fresh wind. And this is um, actually, this is Alderman. You talk about Alderman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it in. I encourage you. It's there. I can tell you he didn't believe me. I wasn't sure. I believed it either, but it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alderman, it's, it's funny. Uh, I, I like Alderman. Uh, uh, I don't know if it, it, it says it in the... Uh, I know he's more defined in the first book, mm -hmm. but it, it, so I don't know if it's clear to you in the second book, because I can't remember, but he was a former, uh, uh, Aryan nation. Yeah, there you go. So you yes. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the interesting part is he and these two get together. Yes. And they're friends. Yes. <laughs> and how often does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> You think about our culture today, right? Um, how can we break down whatever our, the stereotypes are, or whatever whatever our differences are, and really embrace and become friends? We're not just talking about um, a, a difference in ideology. We're talking mm -hmm. about a difference in color, um, and mm -hmm. you match that with the thought process of how you feel about uh, a, a community of people. Mm -hmm. breaking down those stereotypes and those walls long enough to get to the real essence of why a person feels the way they feel to realize that they have yeah. the same desires you had you know and and the interesting thing is i, I well the answer is simple uh, obviously through the history of mankind mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not easy, easy to perform but stop the labeling mm. stop it don't see me as boom. Just get just sit and talk with me. Mm -hmm. Like I sit, used to sit and talk with homeless people. You know, I once saw them as a bum. Mm -hmm. But once I sit and talk with them, now they become human. Yeah. What was interesting, um, when I first started reading um, Love and Death Among Pigeons, um, you paint the scene of what's happening in the uh, in the residential uh, center, um, and Graham is getting more infuriated <laughs> as the days go on. And some <laughs> one person in that center tipped him all the way over, and he said, "I'm done." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're reading. And you're going and you're reading. And I made an assumption. But you tell us that Graham is a white man. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? If I, you know, it's been a while, but yes, I, 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 yeah. he is. Yes. And um, it, it kind of threw me for a minute. Um, just because... Again, you talk about stereotypes and labels. We tend to do that amongst ourselves. Of course. Um, and so you realize that he has this, uh, or Roman has this relationship, be it ever so different, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a care about this gentleman. Mm -hmm. But he describes Graham as being a very caring person. 
Um, and even though he's bringing in other characters like the woman, um, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a very caring person. And so Roman is determined to find out who murders him. Right. Um, and it is such a beautiful story when you talk about removing labels. R R Roman had to really, really um, check himself sometimes to say, look, I was out here too. You know, don't get too grand. Rant, uh, he says, I have a roof over my head. Um, and this, I'm going to read it because this really, um, <laughs> I like what he says. He says, I was beginning. This is, this is Roman. He says, I was beginning not to relate to the homeless I left behind. Oh. He said, I was thinking I was no longer one of them and we had nothing in common anymore. He said, it's amazing what a room can do. <laughs> yeah. Roman, Roman got a pad now. It ain't his, he right. paid for it. But he has a roof over his head. He said- Y'all figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> he said three meals a day, and I was thinking as if I were a millionaire, not just any millionaire, but one who had inherited his money and had no idea the worth of a dollar or the struggle behind it. Arrogance is what separates people from each other. Those with the home are better than those without. White people are superior to everyone. Black pride got it like that that over anyone's pride. Straight people are more than gay people. Modern man is more sophisticated than the ancients. Arrogance causes hatred and war. Oh yeah. That's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Martin Luther King said that. No. I mean... <laughs> you quoted him very, very well. Very well. <laughs> But I read that and that was like so true. We get a little bit, just a little bit. Didn't take a whole month, a whole lot, but we get a little bit and we tend to forget somebody laid down their life for you to get that little bit. Right, right. Somebody gave them stuff away. You, you talked about your father. You talk about your father a lot in this book. <laughs> I don't know whether you're talking about your father or whether you're talking about somebody's father. <laughs> but you share some things. I told you, find me. You. <laughs> and literally, I did. I did. There were so many wonderful things. I, I, you know, I don't want to give all of this good stuff away because there are things in this book I think people need to really, really read. There are necessities of life that are written in this book. If you just follow the path in your mind of a homeless man yeah. um, and how he is impacting lives as he's going, even in the condition that he's in, right. um, but how he brings in the characters who shaped who he could have been. Um, right. Had he not taken, you know, this path, right? Kind of share right. with you more about what your thought process was as you were writing writing this book in that in that regard. Well, uh, you you see how Roman's thought patterns and how how sometimes he can be so mature in his thinking mm -hmm. and understanding in his thinking, and you get to know him and hopefully other homeless people in the book and recognize how important they are. Mm -hmm. But guess what I'm really telling? I'm really telling how important John the Bum was to me. Mm -hmm. This was, I'm nine, 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. He was a man who I never saw as a man, mm -hmm. who I couldn't stand. Mm. who I thought was disgusting, who I treated badly, mm -hmm. but he turned out to be one of the most significant people in my life. Mm. Mm -hmm. who, who but God could do, could do that? And if we would all look at each other 
with knowing that we all have worth, we're all important. Mm -hmm. We all have things to do. We all have things to contribute. Right. Wow. And how significantly he's contributed to your life now or when you started on this mission. Right. Of wanting so, to help. So uh, the, just think of this, Jackie. From that man mm -hmm. who said one word to I wrote two books, mm -hmm. a third one on the way. Mm -hmm. I, my wife and I started a, a uh, nonprofit. Mm -hmm. I wrote a screenplay. Right. I have a, uh, we're in pre production on a pilot mm -hmm. based on, on, on the books. All this from a guy I couldn't stand. Mm. Who you knew nothing about. <laughs> Who I knew nothing about. And you know what's so amazing about that? That could have been his sole purpose in life. That could have been what he was supposed to do. They always say, if you can impact one life, that one life has the potential to impact millions. Yeah, and I know how much he impacted me, and I don't know how much the books and the TV show and will impact others. I don't know, and I don't even know if he how much he positively impacted other people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing, and and you 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 don't know your worth um, until you're put in a position where you have to show forth what it is that you were supposed to do with your life while you were mm -hmm. here. And I, I think about this character, Roman. I mean, he's just uh, awesome. I, I can't wait to get to the end so I can see how the conclusion <laughs> of the whole matter ends. Even though I know there's a sequel, there's something coming out. <laughs> I like one of the other uh, conversations that you had um, in the book about cussing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I will tell you, um, when I first opened the book, I was like, oh, this man of God cuss. What? <laughs> That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know it's not you. Um, I love the fact that you were not intimidated by not including expletives because that is probably very, very real. Well, one, it's very, very real to the common person. Let's just start there. But even right. in a conversation, perhaps with the homeless person, that, that's what you're getting. You know, yeah. they may be mad at the world, but the, the thing that, that was very, very interesting to me, and I tell you, this was one of my laugh out loud moments, mm -hmm. was you gave an explanation for cussing. <laughs> that I thought, there it is, right there. Thank you. You have, <laughs> you have made it okay. <laughs> Not to say that it's okay to cuss, but there's a reality that what we don't say out of our mouths, our minds yep. have already said what he yeah. wanted to say in the first place. Already moment. said. It's and already said. About when you get the feeling all the way down in your gut, that's how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. it's, it's the only word that will work. Exactly. That's exactly what you said. That's the only word that'll fit this situation. And I, the, the Roman, look, I've got to use it. Pastor, excuse me, but right here, right now, I got to use this word. <laughs> and he gave so much respect to the pastor because he knew this isn't the language that I should be using. But he so clearly and so eloquently says, but look, there comes a point in the conversation. There's nothing left that's going to totally express how I'm feeling, but this right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think that was probably one of the funniest moments in the book. You know, I'm sure there'll be a few more, but that one there was just one of those things that even in our own selves, you know, even in our reality and our humanity, um, right. we do run out of words. And, and you know, <laughs> people sometimes when they they start cussing I say you know they just lost they don't they don't have because some people just do it just that's just their their yeah, right they, they don't right. they know better but they choose not to um, right. but there are I believe scenarios in our lives where you, you do run out of some words and silence <laughs> silence doesn't fix it <laughs> no. 
silence doesn't fix it. So mm -hmm. I'm giving everybody a pass who's ever cursed in the heat of anger okay. that Lawrence A. Wood has given a thorough <laughs> explanation to make it okay if indeed you come across a situation where you've run out of words because Roman Bond had to do what he had to do. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but I also wanted to talk to you about the strawberry tree. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. A story yeah. for Christmas. <laughs> that yeah. was the sweetest little journey uh, mm -hmm. that anyone could go on, you know, uh, even an adult, because I enjoyed it thoroughly. What was your um, vision behind writing that book? <laughs> well, you, you, you'd be surprised. Well, I'll just tell you where the idea started. Mm -hmm. But at, I don't drink, by the way. Mm -hmm. But at some point in my life, I, I learned uh, uh, about a daiquiri. I still don't know what a daiquiri is. I don't know. <laughs> but at some point, I had learned there was a such thing as a strawberry daiquiri. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, they make flavors. <laughs> <laughs> Banana, and, strawberry. <laughs> but I thought it was cool. I said, a strawberry daiquiri. Mm -hmm. that, I've never tasted one, but I, I'm just saying that the idea was like, wow. Isn't that cool what people can do? Uh -huh. And I must have learned about it during Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the things that has always been on my mind for the longest time is to not take a story that's well known to people or characters that are well known to people. Right and then make them black. Mm. I don't like that. So I said, well, let's, let's see. I can, I can do a Christmas story mm -hmm. and have black characters. I don't need a black Santa Claus. I just <laughs> my own characters for Christmas. Right. So I use that, that nugget of the strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> and, and melded those three together uh, and, and came up with that story. So it was a wonderful story. It made me think, okay, so I've heard of people say babies are born with a strawberry. It's some kind of little red mark. On oh, yeah, sure. That's right. I, that's, that's right. I thought about that. I thought, okay. Um, was really trying to figure out how does this all come together? But it is a wonderful story. But I'm not giving it away. I'm not telling people all the good stuff in these books. I'm not, I'm not doing it. That one you have to get. That one is actually all of them you have to get. But that's what you definitely want to put in your children's, um, you know, stocking uh, for Christmas or even even now. I mean, it was a great read for me because of how it is written. It doesn't, you know, tie you specifically to December 25th. Um, it's a life of joy and peace and, and, and uh, happiness and how you get there and love, how you get there in this book is awesome. Right. How the characters are intertwined um, and how they're brought out so so wonderfully in the book. But that one I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, there's a mystery in that book. I think people uh, need to make sure that they get it to kind of um, latch on and, and learn it for themselves. But it, it was a yeah. wonderful read. Um, I do want to know a little bit more about your screenplay okay. and what awesome things happened in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> parts, just memories. I was trying to tie that one together in my mind, but I'd like for you to share with us what that, uh, that screenplay okay. is about. And, and it's been so long now, I cannot tell you what, ins what inspired me to write it in the first place. Uh -huh. But it, it probably came, because I'm a sh uh, generally a shy person. Mm -hmm. And this happened before I met my wife that I wrote a one act play. Mm -hmm. And it got third place in a, in a, in a contest. Oh which I thought was, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right? the first go round, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, one of the suggestions at that, when, when it was presented was to make it a full, uh, 
for stage play. Mm -hmm. So I did. Uh, didn't do anything with it after I wrote it. Mm -hmm. Went to Okinawa, Japan, and that's where I met my wife, Vanessa. And she's the one. Mm. She read it. And she said, we should put this on. Wow, I love I'm it. Like, I'm more like, you must be crazy. <laughs> a good woman, I'm telling you. Vanessa, you're a good woman. <laughs> That's right. She is, I'm telling you. I, where I am now is because she always makes these suggestions that are outside my comfort. Mm. And I'll say, well, as long as you're with me, <laughs> we're, we're going down together. <laughs> But that sounds a little Adamish. That sounds a little bit like Adam. Yeah. yeah. Going down, going down I don't know, Mr. Wood. <laughs> but so far we haven't gone down, so I think everything's gonna be all, all right. right. But uh, so we, I mean, we uh, put this thing on, um, uh, and uh, it was out for a month mm -hmm. and uh, it was sold out. It was sold out. Is the title, um, I, 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 I listened in my mind to the title, No Marks, Just Me. Mm -hmm. uh, did that come out of um, a, a situation of sorts? Um, uh, well, it's, it's a situation in the play in which, uh, uh, the the man uh, oh I forgot his name geez I can't forget remember these characters names now but he's pursuing this woman mm -hmm. and at one point you know he's really loving on her and he puts he, he puts his lips to his neck and she thinks she's about to give him a, a, a give her a hickey mm -hmm. right and so she said no 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 because you know, because she's where she's living with a mother, and she she certainly doesn't want to have a mother see this, right? right. Mm -hmm. So she she pushes him away. Mm -hmm. You know, you put a mark on my neck, mm -hmm. and he says, "No marks, just memories." Wow! Oh, that's so. that's sweet. This is going to be a little love story of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. And, and you know what? And I, I think that's um, a good uh, way to even think about life sometimes. You know, sometimes we think we got to do a whole lot, but all you're doing is creating memories. Yeah. I can create good, fond, fresh, wonderful memories. That, that's right. Amazing. That, that's amazing. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So um, I want to kind of go back to the screenplay. Oh, yeah. Or the 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 film um, hmm. that you are piloting or will be piloting uh, for Among Pigeons. Right. Um, how did you get to that point? Or, or should I ask Vanessa? You Thank can you. ask her, but I know the story too. Because guess what? She's the one that got it all going. Right. And it all me. Uh, um. Well, Vanessa has a, uh, a friend, her best friend lives in Atlanta, Gina, Gina Robinson, great producer. Mm. And, uh, and she said, you should get, uh, uh, I was thinking of trying to do, do a screenplay for Among Pigeons. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking about it, how, did that, how do you do that? I don't know how to do that. And at that time, I didn't know how. And uh, she said, well, why don't you, Talk to Gina. Let her do it. So Gina did it. It's been steady progress. And since then, of course, well, not of course, but I've learned how to write screenplays. Right. And, and uh, so we're now in pre-production. We just got another word that now we will be uh, we're slated to begin in 2022, although we don't know what date in 2022. Right. And now, will uh, that be a uh, 
um, one show or one movie or film? It, it'll be it'll be the the first episode of what we hope will be a TV series. Oh wow! Excellent, excellent. Certainly lends um, opportunity for people yeah. to really get to know and understand um, the mindset behind the homeless, just in general. Well, that that that's all I'm after. That's what I'm after. Mm -hmm. You know, and and what. It has changed names from among pigeons to the featherman, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's because that's the gang that uh, uh, Roman used to belong to. Right. Not 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 to mention it. It's it's a more of a catchy title for a TV show than a than among pigeons is. You know. Yeah, I kind of like how Roman handles those two fellas that came to beat on him. They were like, wait a minute, man. If I'm gonna be bloody, <laughs> like if I'm gonna be bloody, somebody else is gonna leave you a little bloody too. <laughs> it's a wonderful yeah. Thing. yeah. So um, so where do you see yourself now um uh in the process of all this? Are you the producer, director? Um, how involved are you in outside from being the writer uh, of this um of this soon coming um uh, well, writer, yeah, writer, director. Okay, okay. And uh, and you know when once the other the the uh, we the pilot production team that's that's the money team. <laughs> right. See what other decisions that they will make, but uh, you know Gina will be the producer and uh, like that. Uh, you get in there somehow as a producer as well. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. So what do you see for yourself going forward outside of, I, I don't see you uh, uh, stop writing. I, I see you continuing to write. Uh, <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm writing, yep. Yeah. And I have uh, an, an, another screenplay I just finished and uh, getting it polished up. But I've had some insiders look at it and, and, and say how good it was, but um, it still needs some polish. But it's called 13 Finches. Wow. And it's about at the beginning, just before the Civil War begins. Mm -hmm. Well, let me give you a, a fact that you, you may be aware of. You know, at the time of the Civil War, there were 4 million slaves in America. Mm -hmm. but at one point, I found out there were almost 500,000 free Blacks living in America. Wow. And most of them lived in the South. Mm. Now, you tell me, what kind of life did they have? Free Black and slave side by side. How does that work? Mm. So... I did some research, read uh, Ira Berlin's book, uh, Slaves Without Masters. Uh -huh. And from there, created the uh, screenplay. But the screenplay is about, at the beginning, of, before the Civil War begins, a free Black family is, struggle, is struggling with the, uh, the risk of hiding a runaway slave mm. from a slave catcher. Mm -hmm. And what is that conversation like between a free black mm -hmm. and a slave? Or how what, does that even happen? Yeah. What, what, how does that, what's the conversation like? What's, what, what do they think of each other? Mm -hmm. I mean, I are, mean. I, I guess what I, I want to ask you then, you don't have to answer me, but. <laughs> Are you paralleling uh, that time period with what's happening now? <laughs> uh, I can wait uh, for it. Or you <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't intentionally do that. I was interested in that time period. Okay. But of course, it parallels now. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it parallels now is because people don't change. Right. You know, uh, uh, and, and, and I, I have to 
uh, be careful in saying people don't change because I know the time that my father lived is not the same as when I lived because I'm certainly a much freer person than, than my father. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but is that more of a state of mind? Yeah. Than yeah like absolutely. Or it's, a, it, it's absolutely a state of mind. Mm -hmm. my, my father, you know, oh, boy, I, when I think of my father and how great he was, he, he was a cab driver. But without saying it, he lived like a free man. Wow. He, he just lived. And he, he, he wasn't bitter about anything. And he grew up in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Eventually migrated to New York. But here's an example of how, how free he was. Mm -hmm. We live in New York City, in, in Washington Heights. He bought a house. How he was able to afford a house in, as, as a cab driver, but he did. Yeah. <laughs> in in Bennettsburg, New York, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. We were the only black family there. Wow. And we only went up in the summertime. Mm -hmm. But how he found the house, I don't know why he chose that place, knowing that we were the only black family there, I do not know. But all, but one thing I will surmise from all of that is that he didn't care. Wow. He's, he found the place where he, wanted, where he wanted to live. He said, this is it. And I'm not concerned about all this other stuff. Mm. That's freedom. Right. He, he, that's freedom. Mm -hmm. And he taught that to me. And I, you know, and I, I, I just live like that. Some people sometimes think I'm just plain naive. And I'm like, well, okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm living. I'm, I'm, I'm achieving all the stuff I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. I'm good. And living well. Living well without labels. Yeah. With yeah. All labels. Yeah. This has been wonderful. I I know there are so many more things that we could get into and we could talk about. For yeah. sure. <laughs> this has been wonderful. Um, how can people connect with you or stay connected connected with what you are doing? Um, I am encouraging everyone to go out and get your books if you want to. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want to laugh out loud, but then have an introspective <laughs> look at your own life, you want to get among pigeons, love and death among pigeons. You most certainly want to get the strawberry tree. How can people access you and get information about what you are doing now and hopefully the future uh, film? You can find me on LinkedIn. That's, that's the one where you can find me. Um, then there's uh, the website, lawrenceawoodmd.com. That's another way as well. Wonderful. And your books we can get on any, uh, oh, I yes. know Amazon, um, any of the Barnes and Nobles. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I thank you so much, Dr. Mr. Lawrence Larry Wood. <laughs> it has been such a pleasure speaking with you. I hope that you will come back and speak with us on Promising Me Unleashed. Um, oh, yeah. So that we can come back and, and, and talk more about the, the I, I believe it's going to be on the screen and we're going to get several episodes because there are so many things in your books that people need to see on film. So we thank you so much for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed, and we look forward to you conversing with us again. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Jackie. I really do.